Events of all sizes are continuously recorded and plotted on mine plans by the micro seismic systems. In active mines, this can generate a lot of data. Very small events indicate that the ground is cracking at a particular location. This can lead to some useful insight on how the rock mass is responding to mining activity. We use this data to better understand seismicity and take preventative measures to keep the mine safe despite the potential for a large seismic event. This is where the information from micro seismic events becomes useful. This is a 3D seismic model for the Beaconsfield mine showing all the events being recorded, all the events being all these dots through here being recorded for the past three years. With all these seismic events that have been recorded we can actually generate a seismic hazard map so that's now looking at clusters of events which have a related seismic hazard in and around individual mine openings. Seismic events tend to bunch together in clusters where the rock is failing or faults are slipping. By analysing a number of events over a period of time, these clusters can be identified. Uh, if I quickly turn that off, that's the equivalent picture with all the events turned off but now actually putting that seismic hazard actually onto the drive. So shown in red here is a high seismic hazard area and shown in the, the blues are the lower seismic hazard areas. Building a history of seismic events can be very useful in managing the risk associated with mining induced seismicity. With this we can also put in all the mining parameters of the drives, so spans, ground support, stresses acting on pillars etc to generate an excavation vulnerability potential and then superimpose on that seismic hazard and what that will start to identify is the hot colours again in here. These are the areas that would be highlighted to go back and do further ground support work or modifications to mining sequences. 